right, welcome to the Robert Show. We are here at Big Data London and it's day one. I'm super excited to have Gram and Julian with me from Musk. Super excited to chat. I'm pretty sure, uh, Gram, last year we spoke with Mark, I remember. Yes. And it was such a pleasure chatting with you about so many different topics and, uh, you know, obviously learn about data and AI. And uh, I'm back this year chatting with you and we have Julian as well. I'm super happy to chat with you both. Just for our audience, would you like to quickly introduce yourself, tell us more about what you do and also the relationship with uh, Dremio. Yeah, so uh, I'm Graham Evans, uh, one of the enterprise architects at Mars, but I'm looking specifically at data and AI. Nice. Thanks, Julian Schaefer over here, also working together with Graham and the team. Uh, I'm a senior enterprise architect at Merck, looking at how we can democratize our data using Dremio, for example, nice. and also looking into AI. Thanks. Kind of curious to learn a little about, you know, what's happening uh, at Merck, plus uh, now the relationship we all had, like yeah. we all have since years with Dremio. So I think when we spoke last year, yes. we were just on, we were sort of six months into really using Dremio seriously. Yes. Um, connecting Dremio to our main data lakes. Right. Um, and since then, a lot of the focus has been about, okay, how do we open this up to users? How do we allow self-serve right. analytics? It's not yes. the only use case, um, but certainly in the last 12 months, uh, it's a case of how do we link the existing data lake, Dremio, and then things like Power BI, Superset, Jupyter, things like that, and put it into the hands of normal users. So these right. are the guys who don't have PhDs and uh, data science background. Maybe they know a little bit of SQL, um, but they want access to the data um, and they want to be able to use the tools that they're already used to. That's awesome. And uh, anything that else that you would like to add, uh, Julian? Yeah, so when Graham is talking about normal users, uh, it's kind of interesting to share. I used to be one of those normal users. Oh, wow. So I'm originally from the business, uh, looking into data analytics. Yeah. So it was very, very cool to join the team roughly two years ago and use Dremio to actually allow those users to finally see the data that is available and use it in their day-to-day -day operations. Nice. Okay, fantastic. So that's kind of coming from the experience that you've already had, which is a plus, right, always to trust a tool and, you know, obviously use it. Uh, I'm kind of, uh, you mentioned about self-serve. I know for a fact where, you know, self-service analytics has been like uh, one important thing for the enterprises out there. And uh, yeah. how are you all kind of taking it next level for your uh, community, for your uh, consumers out there with Dremio? Well, I think one of the big um, issues is you've had uh, a bunch of, uh, a bunch of business users. Yeah. They've always want. They've always had requests. They've yep. always had. Okay, this is what I want. But there's usually a bottleneck. You've, if you've got a centrally managed data team, which a lot of companies have, um, it doesn't matter how big that team gets. There's yep. never enough. So the focus is enabling them to actually do it themselves. Mm. And that is. It's a bit of a mind shift. It requires us to present the data in a consistent way, in a coherent way, spend more time explaining what the data means. But we found once they've actually, once they've got access to it, once they've got the hang of it, um, yeah, they are very excited uh, about getting access to it. And for the users who maybe don't have all of the SQL knowledge and background, we've been using Gen AI to actually allow them to explain the request, explain the, 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 the stuff, and actually produce the SQL format. Okay, so one curious question, uh, those are fantastic insights, uh, Graham. One curious question that I have is around the central data, and uh, now you're kind of moving uh, around to more of openness, is what I'm kind of seeing. So how do you do it, like, how do you, you know, because it's a journey, I would say, right? Yeah. So uh, how are you looking at that sort of thing right now? So a couple of things. So where you've got data in a central data lake, yes. uh, it's about quality. Um, you already have the data, but it's making sure that the quality of the data is there, making sure the documentation, making sure the consistency is there. So that's kind of one stream. The other stream is going to 
other teams and saying, okay, you've got access to data right. um, that other people would need. Can you turn that data into a product? In the same way that any other uh, internal product, like, I don't know, an Apache web server or, or anything like that. Right. Can you productize your data, have a product manager, um, and sell, in the loosest sense of the word, yeah. sell that data to other teams who want to use it, who want to combine it, right. and then actually produce this data mesh of good quality data um, that, at the end of the day, feeds more customer um, insights, better user experience, uh, and, and um, more value. Love it. And uh, yeah, definitely. It is something which kind of eases up a lot of things for the enterprise teams out there, the data teams out there. Julian, in your experience, uh, what do you see? How do you see that this benefiting the departments internally? And I'm pretty sure you have worked in the space yourself. So how do you see things kind of easing up? Yeah, I think it is very important to build a landscape where any kind of user, whether they are experienced users with uh, data science or data engineering background, right. or whether they are just a normal user that are just trying to look whether they can create a report for themselves or their customers, have an idea on how to look for that data. So mm. whilst it is very important that you have an open data lake house, it is even more so important that you provide them with tooling for them to actually figuring out which data is available. How can I search it? And it needs to be easy to navigate. So ideally, you can do this via what Graham mentioned, Gen AI applications, where you just simply have a chat and you can ask all of these kinds of questions. So I joined the team back in the day because I saw it as a big challenge for the entire right. enterprise. And I'm right. super proud uh, to be part of that team to overcome or working towards overcoming that obstacle. That's awesome. Julian, one more question for you and obviously for Graham as well. I know you both uh, always work with newer projects, newer things uh, and with newer technology as well. So when it comes to data and AI, what's new that you're working on? Would you like to share something? And also would love to know a little about the future. How do you see the future of data and AI? Yeah, okay, I can start, definitely. I think let's tackle the future a bit first. I think what you've seen since one and a half years, the hype was real. Many, many companies were just trying to get a foot in the door. And I think what you see now is that it actually now comes to delivering value, mm. which I think many companies haven't done with AI. So we work on certain products that are basically support functions to our users, whether it's in the data space, it can be also in other business functions that allows them to leverage these data products for ease of use and higher productivity. So you gotta find the diamonds in the rough, so to say, right. um, to have applied Gen AI rather than just anything that to do with uh, AI because so true. that's often not really meaningful. So true. Graham? Yeah, um, so certainly on the future thing, um, absolutely, it's all about value. Um, I'm, I'm sure if you panned around here, you will see about 50 or 60% of the stands will have some mention of Gen, uh, Gen AI. True. It is, that's the way it is this year. Yeah. But yeah, Gen AI is great. How do you get value out of it? How do you say, okay, I have 20 ideas, here are the three, they all look cool, but here are the three that will actually make a difference. Um, Very interesting. And in terms of future, just to answer that one, um, what we're starting to see, yes, yeah, some of the hype is kind of starting to calm down about Gen AI. Exactly, we're value. yeah. We're using Gen AI to link to other technologies, mm. be that um, RAG uh, and TAG, um, uh, but also linking AI to workflow engines, to traditional machine learning models and stuff like that, and that's when we're really seeing it taking off. So I suspect if we're having this conversation next year, we'll still be talking about Gen AI, but we'll be talking about Gen AI and something. Something, right, exactly. No, I love it. I love those insights uh, for sure. In, uh, you, you know, you hit the nail right there because I kind of felt that 
2024 was actually because I talked to a lot of enterprise leaders like yourselves yeah. I, and this was the year where they wanted to focus on implementation more than anything. Yes. And they definitely did. We're seeing a lot of results kind of coming out. We are not there yet, I would say. Yeah. But we will get there. And like you said, next year, maybe we'll have something more to add to Gen yeah. AI. Yeah. So definitely looking forward to that. Uh, but it's always such a pleasure chatting with you, Graham. Julian, uh, I'm so happy you made a debut on The Rabbit Show and sharing such great insights with us. Uh, definitely looking forward to keeping the conversation going. One last question for both of you. If folks want to reach out to you, where can they reach out? Is LinkedIn a best place to connect with you or some other place? Yes, uh, Graham Evans uh, on, on LinkedIn. Awesome. Um, I, Graham Evans IT, I think. There's also a member of parliament, so not that one. Um, Julian? Yeah, same for me. Just Julian Schaefer on LinkedIn and you will be able to find me. Thank you very much, both of you, for joining us today on The Robert Show. It is always a pleasure chatting. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.